Welcome once again to Alpha Ministries International, my brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. Greetings, the year 2023. Today I want to take the word of God from 2 Timothy verses 2 to 5. And the word of God declared, Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Eternal, most gracious Heavenly Father, I just want to give you thanks, honor, and glory for your word. I pray that every living recipient of your word, Lord, will pay close attention. Have their minds be transformed. Come to acknowledge you and worship you in spirit and in truth. This I declare and decree in none other name but the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, first I want to take a look at this word because it's vitally important to acknowledge what the word of God is saying here. Preach the word of God in season and out of season. In other words, be consistent with the word of God. This consistency takes for a very close concentration with the Holy Spirit. Understanding fully well and equipping yourself with the knowledge Commitment and pray. Close walk with Jesus Christ at all times in your life. Why is it that you should be consistent in and season and out of season? We live in a fast-paced changing world. Today the word of God becomes so ancient that it means nothing to people. Even hearing the name of Jehovah God seems to be irrelevant. No one cares about what he did years ago to the old apostles and prophets, disciples and teachers, high priests, etc. But what is essential for this time and season that we come to a place in our lives that we understand we need Christ in our lives more than ever. The world had evolved thousands of years ago. Mentalities had been changed. Almost everybody have a level of academic excellence. People come so independent on what the world system can offer that Christ, asking Christ becomes secondary. Everything is a quick fix. And that's what mankind prefer, a quick fix, a quick answer to the problem. And that's, that's nice and good to get quick answers to your problem, but when the persistence of your problems continuously grow when you recognize that there are side effects to your short, quick fix, and whether it's in your body or whether it's out of body, there is something negative happening to every quick fix you get in life. For the man of God and the woman of God, we can't depend on quick fixes. The path to God's kingdom is not a quick fix path. It is straight, it is narrow, it is concentrative. It is based on acknowledging that Christ is your personal savior, your redeemer, your resurrected one, the crucified one, the Messiah, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, all powerful, omnipotent, omnipresent. This God, Jehovah God, is your long-term answer. Jehovah God is the preserver of all life. Short, medium, and long-term, and eternal, God is the preserver of all lives. And until we come to a place where our spiritual eyes are open to the principal teachings of God and the foundation of his kingdom, understanding who you are as a royal priesthood and a chosen generation, until we come to that, our place, to that place in our lives, then we are nothing more 
but walking dead. Sounding brass and tingling symbols. We as Christians, member in the body of Christ, have to pray in season and out of season. It's essential that we do this because the consistency of sin prevailing among us day in and day out requires that we as Christians do the principal thing in praying in season and out of season. Our foundation, the nucleus of our life is embodied in prayer. The nucleus of our life as a Christian is embodied in worship and in praise. That's the foundation of every modern day Christian and ancient Christian in the past. The Christian life is a sacred life. A life that knows, just don't understand the, the realm that we live in physically, but it's a super and natural and spiritual realm that we live and evolve in consistently day in and day out. The ability to forge a relationship with the Holy Spirit through concentrative praise and intimate time spending with the Holy Spirit in your closet of prayer, in a private dominion that you and the Holy Spirit can sink as one. This kind of formality, this kind of ritual in the body of Christ is essential for us as members of Christ. The consistency of praying day in and day out. In season and out of season, for the man or woman of God, there is no season. Our season is eternal. It's an eternal commitment between you and the Holy Spirit. And I come to let you know today that we are preaching the foundation of what Christ are expecting of us. Not just presenting our body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. That's the basic requirement. But if we is to advance the kingdom of God and if we is to prevail and do great things on earth that Christ had commanded us to do and Christ said that we shall do in this time and season, it means it be, we have to move beyond presenting our body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. We got to come to a place where we become spiritually inclined, spiritually immersed in the Holy Spirit, balanced with the foundation of heaven. Understanding the laws and the principle of heaven that we can do the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. That we can heal the sick and raise the dead and drive out demons. That we can bind and we can loose in this time and we can heal and we can deliver in this time and season so that the sinner man can see the glory of God shining in their lives when the system had failed them. When the doctors can't offer a prescription, when the physicians have no answer, and the only physician you can rely and depend on is the Son of the living God called Jesus Christ. Until we come to that place in our life where we understand that earthly realm only pre-give us a, a quick fix, but when you are made fixed by God, God always say to you, you are whole, go and sin no more. This is the level of power and authority that we need to acquire in our lives. This is the level that calls for praying and be consistent in season and out of season. The Christian life today, we can't take it just as lightly as they used to take it before. When you look around, we would recognize that we have all false kingdoms set up. And we preach about this over and over and over again where churches look right. They speak right. They act right. They talk right. You go to the office and PhD in this and a bachelor's in this and a master's in this. Oh, I'm well versed in theology. I'm not versed in the history of Jesus Christ teachings. That is good. Yes, the word of God says, study yourself to show yourself a proof. But conjunction. What use is having all the knowledge about God and still not 
in God. It's the universities and colleges birthing in your spirit the way you need to get close to God and how to immerse yourself in the Holy Spirit. How to walk in diligence, be prudent, be wise, be vigilant. Is the universities teaching you these basic principles or they're simply just putting together a requirement, academic requirements and their subjects, matters of what they're going to teach and the semesters and the professors and is that what they're offering you? Because when they do that, all it simply says that the university that teaching Christianity is no different than the university that teaching science or some of them subject or whatever the case may be. The foundation is the principal thing. The concept of grasping money for teaching the word of God is the same thing. The same founding principles that exist in any average university or college goes on within the college of Christian colleges. If this is a problem, it's a fundamental problem. You see, colleges and universities can teach you the Holy Spirit. Neither can they transform your minds of the Holy Spirit. No man cometh unto God except drawn by the Holy Spirit. Until you as a person get on your knees and bow before the living God and prostrate and allow God to raise you up and inject knowledge and wisdom and transform your soul and spirit until you come to a place in your life where you become one in one with the Holy Spirit and you understand the things of the Spirit for the Word of God declaring the book of Romans to be spiritually minded is life but to be carnally minded is death until we come to this place in our life where we establish the Holy Spirit in ourselves by creating a relationship with you and Him then we don't know God. Knowing the word of God is good. But unless the Holy Spirit is inside you to stimulate the word of God that you have studied, then the word of God just lies dormant within you. But when it is stimulated by the Holy Spirit, every spoken word from your mouth represents life. It accomplishes everything it sets out to accomplish. It heals it. It binds. It loose. It delivers. It break yokes. It break burdens. It elevates you. It restores you. When you and the Holy Spirit has this relationship, then you are on your way to victory. You no longer see yourself as the average person. You understand clearly what is meant to sit in heavenly places declaring the word of God. The vision is a place where you see beyond the natural. The spur of discernment become active in you. Help me here, Lord, to preach this word. You become one with the Holy Spirit, doing all things. Help me, Lord Jesus. For he said it in his word, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. All things, not some things. We need to crave in our spirit. We need to Hunger and thirst after righteousness for the word of God declare that we shall be filled because blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. This is the relationship. This is why it's vital that we have to be in season and out of season. 
Because the evolution of sin is modifying daily over daily after day, it's modifying. But the power of God in you shall be elevating by the Holy Spirit. Every day should be closer and closer knitted with the Holy Spirit. A renewal of mind, a holistic approach. We live in a world where we can't just see ourselves and call ourselves Christians, but you are weak. You can't afford to be a weak Christian in this time and season. And God knows it. And that's why it's imperative to understand that in this season, this now season, God had outpoured his spirit upon all flesh. But the problem is, is that the flesh is not in position to receive the call of the Holy Spirit. The flesh is not in position to receive the Holy Spirit. And until our spirit step out the natural and come into a supernatural environment seized by the Holy Spirit, that you and him become one, then we are weak Christians. And if you're a weak Christian, you better can say you're a no Christian. Because Christ make it absolutely clear. I have not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. If, if you are a Christian, you must have a sound mind. You must have a supernatural, intellectual, and intelligent spirit. God transformed the totality of your whole being, physically and spiritually. There is something within you that tells you constantly, in season and out of season, that I am not just an average human being, but I am a born-again, blood-washed, anointed, appointed man or woman of God that you can establish his will in earth as it is in heaven. This understanding, this partial knowledge enables you to maintain your focus in the body of Christ. This understanding allows you to walk vibrantly as a born again believer. To walk in the supernatural. To stare demons in the eyes. Or oh, there are a lot of people out there who are hurting, who need hell to be broken from their backs. They are in bondage, burdens, yokes around their neck, and they need someone to come in their life and release them out of their misery and confusion. But because in this time the Christians are asleep, they can't do any better. They don't even know. Some of them, themselves, that call themselves Christians, they need hell to be broken off their back too. They need a yoke to be broke. They need a burden to be released. They can't get it, do they? are powerless. God didn't call you to be powerless. After all, you are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar kind of a person. You are royalty in God's kingdom. And until you understand fully well who you are as a member in the body of Christ, you will maintain a life of being victimized by the carnal knowledge and demonic forces of hell. We can't live in a subjected world to sin anymore. Someone got to come to a place in their life where they fully establish a level of faith in who they are in the body of Christ. We must walk by faith. We must live by faith. We must demonstrate by faith. 
God is the same God yesterday, today, now, and forever. He commanded his disciples. And therefore, if you are a disciple in God, you have the ability to do all those things that Christ said you can do. Why are you not doing it? Is it because you didn't spend time praying and fasting? Is it because you just want to live by bread alone? You don't want some of the spiritual food, which is married to your, which is food to your belly and married to your bones? You see, we can't live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Father, every guideline by the Holy Spirit, every guidance by Jesus Christ when he was on earth, those principles, those commands that he has given his disciples would have transcended from one generation to another generation to those who seek to worship him in spirit and in truth. But the laws of the land place us in a position where we are muzzled, where we don't want to speak, because we, feel, we think that we are infringing on someone's right. God had made us as bold as lions. To be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. To speak his unadulterated word in spirit and in truth. A lot of folks ain't going to like God's word. It cuts like a two-edged sword. It heals and it binds you up. The word of God is there to destroy sin. The carnal knowledge from your spiritual being to rip it apart so you can be birthed into a new creation. The carnal nature must die if the spiritual not nature is to live within you. If the spirit of God is to thrive within you, the carnal nature must die. Hence, that's why he said that you must present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable as your reasonable service. But these days, I think, I don't even think there's any reasonable service anymore. Everyone, when things happen, choose to march and cry out to the system and the system let them march and before you know it, problems are all over again and it continue and it evolves and it moves from one point to the next and that's it. No more results. And this goes on from one generation to another. But I come to let you know today that all your needs can be met in Christ. All your problems can be solved in Christ. It doesn't matter what the devil bring before you. It doesn't matter how hard he try. Jesus Christ is a mighty deliverer. He is the same God yesterday, today, now, and forever. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that he didn't do then that he can't do now. He is still supreme God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. He is still King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is the great I Am, Prince of Peace. That's who God is. Represent life in totality, all your freedom, all your power is embodied in the Holy Spirit. And this is your hour where you should reach out and seek Christ in spirit and in truth. Change your carnal nature, change your physical being. Understanding that you are more than flesh and blood, but you are spirit also. And we must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is your hour of visitation. This is your hour where you can say, Lord Jesus, transform my life. And right there where you are, say these words for me, Lord Jesus, 
transform my life, transform my mind so I will come to know you as my personal savior. Make me a new creation in the body of Christ. For the balance of my life, Lord Jesus, let your will be done. Now, eternal most gracious heavenly father, I want to give you thanks for your word. I pray that every single recipient of your word, Lord, will pay close attention to know the time and season that we are living in. That they will come to know you as their personal savior. Seek you and pursue you and worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, that their lives will be transformed. That they can be subject to eternal life. Live as a royal priest of the chosen generation, a peculiar kind of a people. Lord, let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven, Lord. Let life eternal reign among your sons and daughters. Transform minds today and transform hearts. For you said, blessed are the pure heart, for they shall see your God, Lord. We pray for a clean heart today and a cleansing in your sons and daughters. Let your will be done now, Lord, in earth as it is in heaven. This I declare and decree in none other name but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And bless the Lord.